Asian American magazine, I'm Zahara Mans. The mixed marriage matchmaking process is still normal now in many, many countries. That includes Pakistan and India. With us today is Shanaz Bengali. She'll be telling us about the custom and costume. Welcome to the show, Shanaz. Thank you. Yes. Uh, could you tell us about uh, the matchmaking process? Are there still being uh, practiced here in South Florida? Yes. Among the community? Yes. And I should say 95% of the times it's mm. ma arranged marriages. Yes. Yes. And uh, ha you want to know how it's happened? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It happens like the f boys' family, mm -hmm. they tell their close friends if they know any girl or if it's a nice girl, mm -hmm. and then they go to the girl's house to see the girl. Yes. And they see the girl, how the girl looks like, and they give an official proposal. Mm -hmm. The girl's family, they investigate about the boy to find out if the boy is okay. They t ask the girl if she likes the boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they show the picture to see if she likes the picture. And if she gives the approval, they mm -hmm. tell the boy's family, yes, it's okay. Yeah. And then they are engaged. Mm -hmm. And then it's marriage. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, character reference. You know, yes. Like oh, yes. oh, yes. And if he can support his wife, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He has to support his wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, a very uh, impo important factor for sure. Yes. And the character also, mm -hmm. it plays a very important role. Yes. Uh, what about uh, marriage? Uh, to more than one woman later on. Is it normal practice also? Uh, no, it's not a normal practice. You can't afford one wife these days. You can't afford five, four <laughs> wives. Yes. So, I mean, you see it, but it's not everyday thing you see it. Mm -hmm. And because you can't afford one wife. Yeah. So that's why. So that's a, that's a law of the government in the country no, of Pakistan? No, it's not law. It's by religion. You can have four wives. Uh -huh. But you have to keep all four wives the same. You have to keep them happy, give them same food, same clothes, same shelter. Yeah. And no men can do it this all in right. this day. That's so that's why it's you don't see it that much. Yeah. Only like when the first wife dies or mm -hmm. something happens to the first wife. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have a second wife. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, there's uh, the uh, Muslim teaching, right? Uh, derived from the time when uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, was uh, staying behind while lots of other men went f went to war. Mm -hmm. So he ha he was obliged to take uh, four women. Four women. Uh, yes. Yeah. But uh, now people they don't go to war and anything mm -hmm. and like if you go to war it's not like you stay away for such a long time yeah, yeah. then you need a second wife or a third wife and at that time like they say there were too many women and less men yes <laughs> so that's why you had you could marry uh, this we talk, we're talking about economic here but uh, what about emotionally uh, the men still have to uh, fulfill that uh, to all the different wives yes Definitely, you have to have like give up. I mean, go to the <laughs> all for wives or whatever. But he has to be a faithful husband to all for wives. Sounds like he has to be a superman. So. Yes, <laughs> to have it. Yeah, to have four wives in these days. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what about dowry? Uh, could you um, um, clarify about sure. that a little? Uh, the dowry is that the parents of the daughter mm -hmm. they have to give at the time of the wedding, mm -hmm. like so many sets of jewelry, so many clothes, so many shoes, furniture. Mm -hmm. The present government right now, they are trying, trying to ban it because the poor people, they can't afford to have their daughters married because it becomes too expensive for them. Mm -hmm. So that's why the present government is trying to cut it down yes. and that you cannot show it off. Yeah. If you're giving something to your daughter, you have to give it privately or secretly. But you can show to other people what you're giving to your daughter. Could you describe to us about uh, uh, the wedding ceremony itself? Uh huh. Okay, we have the wedding ceremonies. As it starts from eight days. Mm -hmm. Eight days? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time. But it starts with, like, we have the girl, she's not supposed to go out of yeah. the house. And she stays in, and the yeah. friends, they come in. and. There is one ki maid kind of a lady who comes every day and she massages the whole body mm, okay. and the girl is not supposed to leave the house. Right. So all everyone gets together mm -hmm. and they sing and they dance and they eat. Mm -hmm. So that's why it takes eight days. Yes. Um, um, what about uh, the bridal costume? How long it takes to, to make? Well, you have to give the tailor or the guy who embroiders it because it's hand embroidery. Mm -hmm. So you have to give the man a month. 
yeah. to finish embroidering and all that because it's a very very heavy cost to you and okay. it's really you can't wear it the next time yes so it's it's really intricate the yes. embroidery yeah let's let's have a look at the uh, bridal costume sure. how many days you say it takes to to uh, to make a uh, one month one month great mm. right. okay you want me to start? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's okay. beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, this is Kala Garara. It's the traditional bridal outfit. Uh -huh. And she's wearing a small top. Yes. And the pants are in two. It's just like bell bottoms. Uh -huh. And she, the veil, it's called the dupatta. Yeah. And it's like the jewelry also. She has to wear very heavy jewelry. And it's all hand embroidered. Yeah. So you have to really give the man real enough time so that he could finish the work yes and uh, he has to be very careful like what uh, he's doing it's done with a um, uh, gold uh, thread. yes yes it's the gold thread sometimes people like silver threads also it depends on the girl mm -hmm. or the family of the girl what they prefer they prefer in gold or they prefer in silver but mostly you see it in gold yes. gold and with sequences and all that Yes. Um, what about the uh, the um, accessories? Okay. Could you tell us sure. about it? The the pendant kind of a thing which she's wearing on the forehead. It's called a tika, mm -hmm. and some girls they. E yeah, what is this now we are watching? Okay, this is the Hyderabadi dress. Mm -hmm. It's a traditional dress from Hyderabad Dakkan. Mm -hmm. It's also a kameez. The shirt is called a kameez and the dupatta, which is the veil, it's a seven yards. Mm -hmm. And it's wrapped so elegantly that you can't even see that it's seven yards. For what occasion it is costume? You can wear it use? for weddings. Mm -hmm or for any special occasion if it's your brother's wedding or any other wedding in the family yes. or for Eid. Eid is Christmas for us and you can wear it for the Eid mm -hmm. or any special occasion you can wear it and uh, it's also quite you have to work on it it's gold embroidery and all that on it mm -hmm. so it's it's quite heavy but you can't wear it as a casual wear uh -huh. Yeah, what we're seeing now is the sari. This is uh, okay. The sari is it's mostly it's very popular in India and Pakistan both. It's a six yards material. It's wrapped around so elegantly, mm -hmm. and it's quite comfortable to wear it. And you see it, people wearing it for weddings, receptions, and there are so many ladies they even wear every day and do the housework also yes. with wearing the saris. It looks very, very elegant and yes, very it's nice. very elegant. But yes. the thing is, uh, I would imagine it takes a lot of getting used to in order to get around comfortably. Yes, otherwise you're yes, get you really have to up. until then you can, otherwise you can't do it. Yeah. Experience makes <laughs> practice makes you perfect. Right. <laughs> But uh, yes, it's a very elegant outfit mm -hmm. and it's very popular in India too. Yeah. And it depends, it comes in chiffon, cotton, you can have it embroidered just like a wedding dress. Yes. Or you can wear a plain sari. Mm -hmm. And she's wearing a Banarsi sari. What is it? Banarsi. Uh -huh. it's, it's a place in India called Banaras. Yeah. And it's very popular or famous mm -hmm. in saris. And, uh, yeah. That's a national costume for the daily wear. This is the this is the casual, or, or you can have it for weddings too, or special yeah. occasions, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very comfortable outfit. Yeah, could you tell us what are you you wearing here? Okay, What's this the is called the shalwar kameez. Mm -hmm. The pants are known as shalwar, mm -hmm. and the top is known as kameez, mm -hmm. and the scarf, the long scarf, it's known as the dupatta. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, it takes a lot of time to to make the scarf. Uh, Oh. It depends. Oh. You can wear a plain scarf too, but this is really hard work because you have to make and put every all those sequences here. So it's real hard work. Yeah. Uh, is it an old one? Yes, this is 27 years old. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is from my grandmother. She gave it to my mother, and my mother passed it on to me. <laughs> so. so obviously you're married. Yes, uh, I am. Were you married here? No, I was married in Pakistan. I see. How long have you been here in uh, uh, Florida? Close to five years, yes. Five I've years. been in Miami close to five years. I see. Okay. 
Okay. She, what are we seeing now? Okay, yeah. she's wearing also shalwar kameez mm -hmm. and her dupatta is also quite embroidered and all that. Mm -hmm. And this is a casual wear too. Well, from which province uh, this costume is originated from? It's all over Pakistan you can wear it. It's from Karachi. Uh -huh. in, you see it in Lahore. In all provinces you see them wearing this because this is the national outfit of Pakistan. I see. And uh, men also wear the same kind of outfit but they don't wear in these bright colors but they have their style also of shalwar kameez and they also wear shalwar kameez. Yeah, this is more practical for Yes. Moving and around. Yes, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable. And she's also wearing a churidar kurta, which is more or less like shalwar kameez. Mm -hmm. But the pants, which is called churidar, yeah. it's very tight. Yes. And it has gathers, which we call churi. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called churidar. And you can wear uh, the dupatta also with it. And it's also a very casual wear. You can wear it daily. Yeah, what uh, language is it? that you're saying? Urdu. Chatar. Urdu. Urdu? Yeah. It's the language of Pakistan, Urdu. Yeah, I yes. see. Uh, do you wear modern clothing at, uh, when you go to work, obviously? Yes. Over here? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What about at home? At home, I wear Pakistani clothes, and especially like when I go to any party. It doesn't matter if it's mm -hmm. an American party. I wear shalwar kameez. Yes. Yes. Are you um, uh, actively involved with the uh, community here? Yes. Oh. And I'm the member of the Pakistan Cultural S Society. Yeah. And it's very actively involved in getting all Pakistanis together. Mm -hmm. Right now we are in the process of having uh, the names compiled of all Pakistanis, mm -hmm. their professions, their telephone numbers, so that we could have all Pakistanis united. And then we can have a census that how many Pakistanis are living in South Florida. Yes. And uh, we have quite a few events. Actually, an event in, is coming up on April 26th. It's a picnic so that we could have all Pakistanis get together. Mm -hmm. And we are having it at the T.Y. Park in Hollywood. And we are doing quite a few things up here. Right. Yeah. Uh, how many Pakistani people are there in uh, Florida? Oh, my gosh. There must be in thousands. Is that yes. right? Oh, yes. So you don't see so many Pakistanis in the daily every day mm -hmm. but especially when there is a show because we have a show Pakistan Day show every August 14 because that's our Independence Day mm -hmm. and you see a lot of Pakistanis they come out there and then you know realize that there are so many Pakistanis up here mm -hmm. and the compilation of the names of all Pakistanis that's going to help us a lot to yeah. give the exact figures how many Pakistanis are here yes yeah. how long have you been here uh, four and a half years, four close half to five years. years. Yes. What brought you here in uh, Florida? Uh, my husband was from was living in Miami, mm -hmm. and ours was also an arranged marriage. Yes. So he came there for fifteen days, and we got married, and then I came here. I joined him here. So this is a matter of fate. Yes. In a way. <laughs> yes. Fate brought me to America. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, did you already uh, speak English when you were yes. in Pakistan? Yes, English is the second language also in Pakistan. Uh -huh. So when you are taught Urdu, that's the first language, uh -huh. you are taught Ur English also. Uh -huh. So it goes side by side. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful, yeah. So uh, what are the activities that you are involved in with the community besides uh, participating? Are you uh, actively uh, involved in something of your own? Uh, well, Pakistan Cultural Society does everything. Mm -hmm. And then like they have people they come over like actors and actresses mm -hmm. or singers they come over from Pakistan and then we have shows for them mm -hmm. and uh, we help people out like this show it's to let people know that Pakistan yeah. is a also it's a Pakistan is a country <laughs> and and a lot of Pakistani people here yes a lot of Pakistani residing. people yeah. true that's uh -huh. true and uh, they are very involved with your culture still. oh yes yeah they are quite very involved in the day-to-day -day activity yeah. and we have Mr. Rana he's the president so Hale Rana of the mm. committee yeah. and uh, everyone is involved <laughs> <laughs> yes. so yeah. be and it's good to be involved because you can you learn about other Pakistanis what they are doing and if they need you and help so mm. and mm. if ever you need help they are there to help you right. so that's one thing you know that you have someone of your own mm -hmm. in this country okay thank you very much for joining the show and um, thank you for in you. inviting me here <laughs> with your life here in America yes mm -hmm. thanks so much for being with us do join us again <laughs>